Well, hello everybody and welcome to my Facebook Live card class. I know I'm a couple hours early for Live at 5, but my husband's on his way from the airport and I figured um, I'd like to get everybody into this class before he pulls in the driveway and the dogs go nuts and he's been gone, what, a week, a week and a half. So it's kind of really not fair for him if I just say, well, I'm going upstairs to do a Facebook Live. See ya. Nice to see you. Welcome home. So welcome to my class. And if you joined me on Sunday, you got to watch as we created these three cards. So we had this Valentine card, or actually I'm going to be sending it out for other than Valentine's because I made a whole bunch of these and never sell, sent out a single card um, for Valentine's Day. So that was the end of that one. But we created this one, and then we created this one, and we created this one. So these were the three cards that we made on Sunday. These all use the same sketch, and today we're going to bump the sketch up one notch and make three totally different cards that use the same, the same design. We're just going to add a couple extra elements, and hopefully this is going to go well because I kind of set up my, my video device a little bit differently, and I have to get used to it. So if I tend to go out of the screen, let me know because I'm going to try really hard to keep everything in place. So as people are joining us, just a quick reminder, I posted all of the details this afternoon for my latest card class to go. And it's a, it's kind of a four, four step class. You can order the full class with the honeybee bundle so that will get you the the bundle so the stamp and the dies plus a six by six one sheet wonder plus four card sketches plus four full card tutorials for making these cards and included in that class is all the materials for creating the cards the next step is the tutorials what did I do? It was a tutorials free with purchase. So you place a $50 order in my online store and use the hostess code that's unique to this um, Busy Bees card class. And you'll get the one sheet wonder, the four card sketches and the four card tutorials for free. And then the third option is just purchasing the PDFs only. And that is $15 you'll receive the cutting template for the one sheet wonder, the four card sketches and the four card tutorials all together in one downloadable PDF and that's $15. So that's good for demonstrators, customers alike. You already have the B bundle, you already have all the designer series papers and card stocks and everything to create the cards. All you need is the instructions. That option is there for you for $15. So you just have to contact me, let me know which option you like, and we will get the ball rolling. So all of that is available here on my Facebook page as well as on my blog. So that's that. And I also have, outside of the Busy Bee card class, I also have my Poppies and Bloom card tutorial. It's a four-card tutorial. The... Um, Hostess code for receiving that tutorial is also here on my Facebook page as well as on my blog. If you're joining me from Facebook or YouTube, you can find that information. And um, when I'm done this quick little class, I will repost all of that information here in this post. So that is the Poppies and Bloom card tutorial. I believe it's um, even pinned to the top of this Facebook page. So that's just a little quick intro. I see some people are finding us. Hi, Robin. How are you? And I think we can get started. So the first class that we're going to make, I actually posted a few days ago, and that is my puppy dog card, as people were calling it. I call it my Labrador card. If you've been following me for a while or know me personally, you know that I have Labradors. Labradors are a hunting retriever, and I was hoping these birds would look more like ducks, but they're the closest I, ha closest I have to ducks. So this is the first card we're going to make. 
As you can see, it closely resembles my sketch from Sunday, which I had a copy of that sketch around here somewhere. Oh, there it is. I put it aside. So this is the sketch that we followed on Sunday, and this is the sketch that we're gonna be following today, but we're just gonna be bumping it up a notch. So you can see it does closely resemble the sketch. It just uses a larger piece of the designer series paper. So what I started with is a standard card base, and this is, um, let's see, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And we're gonna be doing that in landscape mode. Then I have a piece of designer series paper, and this is cut four by five and a quarter. This is out of the designer series paper that is part of Celebration. Right now it is currently sold out, but we expect to have it back in inventory by the end of the month. That's the Golden Honey Specialty Designer Series paper. It's also the paper I'm featuring in my card class to go, but rest assured, I stocked up on it, so I have plenty for the card class. We also have a scrap of basic black, and we have a scrap of, oh my gosh, you're gonna make me forget this color, aren't you? There goes my brain. So saffron. So, so saffron is my yellow lab, and basic black is my black lab. I also have pre-die cut a piece of very vanilla with the stitched rectangles dies. And that I believe is the third largest. I'm addicted to these stitched rectangles. Well, the stitched anythings. So let me see. Nope, it's the fourth largest or the fourth down. Okay, so that's out of very vanilla. And then I cut a piece of basic black to mount behind that. And I basically just used, um, took my die and I used a scrap of the basic black. And then I just used that fabulous little mini trimmer that you can get when you join my team during celebration. And I just trimmed it to size because these aren't these aren't a perfect measurement um so i thought it was i just found it easier to use the mini trimmer and if i have if i come across a ruler i'll measure it for you exactly but it, i know it's kind of obscure there's eighths in there um but if you have a have your mini trimmer it's just as easy to to take your piece of vanilla and use it as a template and chop your basic black around it so i have that and I've also pre-die cut my reeds out of basic black because I wanted them to basically look like a silhouette behind my Labradors. And these little grasses come from the Lakeside Framelits dies. So that's this little guy right here. And I cut two of those to go behind my Labrador. And then we just need to punch some Labradors. So I have the puppy dog punch, and we're just gonna punch one black lab and one yellow lab. I figured Mr. Bo had to be represented in my card. He would be upset if only his sisters were represented. It's all about keeping Mr. Bo happy. So now I have my puppies and make sure I keep everybody within the screen here. All right, we don't need the little hearts. You can set those aside for another project if you want, or you could use them on the inside of your card. And then we need to stamp our greeting and our birds. So the birds come from high tide, and that's this flock of birds here. I'm sure we have other flocks of birds <clears throat> that would work just as easily on this card, but this is the one that I grabbed. So hopefully you have that for recreating the card. All right, and I only want to use the three largest birds. I don't want to use these three little birds down here. So I'm gonna get my memento black ink 
And I'm just going to ink up, oops, without trying to wobble the table too much. Just gonna ink those up. And I did get some black on this one, so I gotta get rid of that. Otherwise, that's gonna make a giant mess. All right, I'm making a mess anyway. Ugh, it's never a Facebook Live until you make a mess. I have to start over. All right, never mind. Just use my... Use my chamois, get rid of it, and start over. What I should do is just cover them with washi tape. And then I don't have to worry about it. There. We'll just cover them with washi tape and start over. Should have done that to begin with. All right. Okay, so there's my birds. Get rid of the washi tape. And then I can have them flying at the top of the page. There's something on here. Ugh, probably dog hair. I think there's dog hair on my stamp. All right, get that off. Okay. I'm just gonna stamp my birds. Yeah, I'm keeping it real all right. I'm making a lot of messes. Doesn't get much more real than Facebook Live. Okay, so there's that, and then I need to stamp my greeting. So I wanted to leave this card so that it could basically be for anything. It doesn't have to be for a specific reason. So I just chose the A Best Friend Leaves a Paw Print on Your Heart from the Happy Tales stamp set that coordinates with the punch but I just wanted it to say a best friend dot, dot, dot. And then I can cater the inside to whatever I need the card for. So I'm going to take the stamp out because I actually was thinking it would be nice to put something on the inside that said is always by your side, is never far from your heart. things of that nature instead of, you know, putting this whole thing on the front of the card. Okay, so now I need my washi again. And of course it's gonna fight me because, you know, we're live, so why should the washi behave? So I'm just gonna take the washi tape and I'm gonna cover up the words that I don't want so that I only have a best friend. And actually, I just realized I forgot my marker. All right. Then I'm gonna get the memento blackout again, and I'm gonna ink up the a best friend really well with the black. And then, without trying to make too much of a mess, you just take the washi off. Okay, get rid of that. Clean the extra ink off the block. And then I want this down at the bottom. Making room for the dot, dot, dot. I think I went a little low on this one, but. We shall see. Oh, actually it's not too bad. I could have liked that a little bit higher, but it's not bad. It'll do. And then if I had it with me, which I don't, but you'll get the idea, I would use my basic black uh, marker and just I just dotted the dot, dot, dot with the marker. But I don't think you need to have, have to Wait for me to go get the marker. I think you get the idea. I'll do it after. All right, so we're just gonna glue this down flat. 
I thought there was enough dimension once I get all those puppy dogs on there that I didn't need to pop up the DSP. As I get glue all over myself. All right. So this, how do I want this? I guess this went this way. Okay. So this is just gonna get flat glued onto the front. Make sure I've got a pretty even border all the way around. Then this is gonna get glued to the basic black. But I'm going to use use a sna use snail or something like that. I don't like to use glue, liquid glue on Whisper White and Berry Vanilla because it, I always think it shows, it gets a little bumpy, I think. It must be the way that I apply my glue. All right, and then this is gonna get popped up on the front. So we need our dimensionals. Pop my dimensionals on there. I don't know if you heard that, the wind is picking up out there. And it's 80 degrees out today. I've got the air conditioner on. My husband's not gonna know what hit him because it was not 80 degrees in Boston, I can tell you that. All right, so this is gonna go down on the front. And I want it pretty even. Then we're gonna glue down our little grasses. Now, if you have some of those um, adhesive sheets that we used to carry, I'm actually gonna use those on another project. That would be good to use if you don't wanna have to apply the glue really fine. So I'm gonna put this one down pretty much about there. And then I wanna put my puppies together. So they're gonna just overlap each other, my little buddies. And then put them down about where I think they're gonna go so that I can put down my other grass. Let's see. Because one puppy is popped up and one isn't. So I wanna make sure the grass is under the dogs. So I gotta know where they're gonna be just about. So I think right about there is gonna be good. All right, so there's my grass. And then did I pop up? Nope. The yellow puppy is flat with glue. He's in the back. So we're gonna put them down. Let's see. I think he can go about there. You'd think puppy placement moved mattered as much as I'm making it matter. Really doesn't matter that much. All right, that one's too big. I'm gonna get mini dimensionals for behind his head. Okay, so now this puppy can go in front of the other puppy. All right. So he's got to go down a little bit lower. All right, so there you go. There's your card, there's your first card. So the puppies are sitting there in the reeds watching the birds come in. All right, so I hope you like that one. That's our first card. Our second card uses, again, the same sketch but we're using totally different stamp sets and colors. So for this one, 
We're going to be using the Wiggle Worm stamp set. And we're gonna use the coordinating Wiggle Bugs dies. So this one is, um, these are actually on low inventory. So if you're interested in purchasing the Wiggle Worm stamp set and die bundle, you probably should do that soon before it goes on back order. We're also going to use the Garden Green ink. And I have all of my pieces here already pre-cut. So I have Mint Macaron, and that's again cut in the five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. I have a piece of which designer series paper is this? This is that tropical one. Is it Tropical Tropical Oasis? Or am I making up? Yes, Tropical Oasis. I thought I was making up my own names. All right, I have a piece of Tropical Oasis designer series paper. This is cut the same as we did on Sunday. So we're used, we used the second largest stitched rectangle die to cut that. Then I cut a piece of garden green cardstock that's one eighth of an inch around larger than the die. And from that, I die cut the large leaf die from the Wiggle Bugs dies set. I cannot say that once, let alone three times fast. So that's this die right here. And then I also cut another dot, another one of these leaves with the mint macaron. And I just have to pop that out of there. So I have my green leaf here. My garden green leaf is there. Then I have my mint macaron leaf. So we're gonna put that aside. And then we need this little piece from the inside of the die. And we do not need the green piece from the inside. We can put that aside as well. I also have a stitched scalloped rectangle. And again, we're following pretty much now we're following what we did on Sunday. So this is the second largest from the stitched so sweetly dies. So it's the second largest from the stitched scalloped stitched rectangles and the second largest from the standard stitched rectangles. Try I'll tell you they want to make tongue twisters for us. I've also pre-stamped using the black memento one of my little wiggly bugs, the little worm. And then this little guy right here, which I'm gonna color as a ladybug, even though I think it may have too many legs, <laughs> but I wanna make her a ladybug. So she's gonna be a ladybug, whether she should be or not. That's what she's gonna be. So the first thing I wanna do is start adhering my layers so I don't get ahead of myself. So the, I'm gonna take the liquid glue and I'm gonna go around the die cut shape first and then I can go around the outside of my stitched rectangle. And that's just so I don't, if I do the whole entire back here, I'm gonna be oozing all over the negative where I cut that out. So this is just gonna go on even. Nobody's gonna know I did that. No one's gonna know I cheated, just us. So don't tell anybody. So that's all on there good. And then I'm gonna flat glue this to the front of the card. If you want to, you can pop it up. I just thought there was a lot of layers going on already. So if I wanna mail it, I wanna leave it a little flatter. Okay, so that's going down on the front like so. I'm gonna move these out of the way. I need my ink. And I need a greeting. Let's see. I think I'm gonna do the, I'm lucky to have a friend like you from the Love What You Do stamp set. 
I haven't used that in a while, so we will use that. If I can get it out. All right. So I've got that. I need a block. So I'll just use the one I used before. All right. Make sure I get that the right way. Okay, so now I'm gonna use the garden green and stamp my greeting. Let's see, I think I should get a pad. I don't have another one of these cut and ready, so I can't mess up. So I'm gonna use my pad. And I think it can go right about like there. Close this so I don't get something in it and make a mess. Okay, that worked. Phew. Okay, every step I make that doesn't have a mistake in it, I'm good. Makes me feel much better. All right, so now I need to color these guys in and we need to die cut them. So I gotta get my dies ready. All right, so I have the, what do I have here? Light granny apple green and I have dark granny apple green blends for the little wiggle worm. Then I'm going to use the light real red on my ladybug. And then I have the ivory for Ladybug's face. So I'm just going to hope that this works. Coloring with blends under a microscope. Yay. Okay. If there's a right way or a wrong way to color with blends, don't tell me. Because this is just the merry way. I just color. I always like to start with the light and then add my shadows with my dark and then blend it all in with the light. If there's a different way to do it, I haven't learned it. Okay, so I'm gonna do her face in ivory. Not sure I exactly like that. I might have used a paler pink or something. I'm gonna just use my color lifter and take some of that off of there so it's not as dark. Then I have my real red and we're just gonna hope this looks like a ladybug. What the heck is this? This is light real red and it looks pink. Wow. That looks really pink. Maybe I should have used dark real red. That looks really pink. Hold on, look at that for two seconds. I hope I don't fall running across the room. I just think that looks really pink. Maybe I should have done a trial before I Went live with it. All right, dark real red is definitely better. And as long as I went and got the markers, this is dark basic black. Let's see, what's this one? I got light smoky slate and dark black because we need to give her a butt. I'll just use the black. Well, that's better. It's not as pink, right? 
Don't you think it's not as pink? Okay. All right. Next. Now we have to cut these out. And I just realized why I never set up my phone this way during Facebook Lives. I wanted to plug it in. So hopefully I don't run out of battery because I just realized the way I have it in the stand, I can't plug it in. I'm gonna have to hustle. All right, can you, am I in the thing? Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna cut these out. So we have our little wiggle worm and our ladybug and my, let's see, this is not the right die. I think it's this one, yeah. I'm like, why isn't that working? I am going to use a little bit of washi tape to hold these in place because my magnetic platform is really old. And my plates have a bow in them. So I would hate to get this far and have it kick and not cut right. All right, so now we just have to cut our bugs. And I hope the table doesn't jump too much. That wasn't too bad. Okay, oops, I didn't crank it enough. Okay. See how we did. Okay, so now we have our worm and our ladybug. Look at how cute. I hope I don't lose these. <clears throat> okay, so now we can put it together. So I'm going to take the mint macaron leaf insert and I'm going to put it back inside of the green one. And then, what did I do with my tape? I'm gonna do something I've never done on a craft project before and use tape, scotch tape. I've seen other people do it, so I figured, why can't I do it? So I'm just gonna put a piece of scotch tape on the underside of the leaf to hold that all together and hope that nobody ever knows that I use scotch tape on a project. And then my leaf is going to get taped down over my greeting. So we're just gonna put dimensionals on this. And Pick those off. Okay, make sure I got all the backings off. All right, so this is gonna be on the front of the card. Try to get it straight. That's not, it's not even left to right. That looks pretty close. Okay, so now we have to put our leaf on. So I'm gonna do a little mini dimensional there. I threw these aside and I needed them. Just randomly put some of these on. Probably should have put that greeting down a little lower. Oh well. All right, so this is gonna hover at the end. Ooh. That took up a little space. Let's see. I'm trying to eat some of this dead space over here. Hmm. This probably should have gone down a little bit. Oh well, too late now. I didn't take the stuff off of that dimensional. That was silly. Okay, and then we just need to put on our little bugs. So I've got mini dimensionals. The buggies. 
This guy can have a big one. We'll put a mini behind her head. And then my little worm. Ugh, all these little backings. Okay. So, how do I want to do him? I guess I'll do him. He was eating... He was eating leaf before his friend came along. Let's see, she needs to go there, but she's gonna be off the leash, leaf. So she needs an extra dimensional behind her head. So she's not crooked. Okay. So there you go. I think the only thing I would have done different is I would have dropped the greeting down a little bit so that there wasn't all this blank space down here. I probably could put some rhinestones or something in here if it bothered me too much. But there's that one. And then this is the one that I did as my template, which I thought was cute. And it has the little bee and the little worm. And I use no one will ever be as entertained by entertained by us as us oops I'm not in the camera no one will ever be as entertained by us as us and that comes from the thanks for the laugh stamp set that's in the mini catalog so now I have two I just use different bugs so I thought those came out really cute hopefully you like those and now we're on to our final card look at that Okay, so this last card goes one little bit further. And this time, if I can grab, I need to grab my stack of stuff. So this time we are going to use the Painted Poppy stamp set. And we're going to use the Poppy Moments dies. Our color is going to be Poppy Parade for the ink. Okay. Then we have the Granny Apple Green, right? Yeah. Granny Apple Green for our cardstock. And we have, I've pre cut all my little stuff here so you don't have to watch me die cut because that's boring. So this is the um, Granny Apple Green cut at eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Once again, I have, what did I do? Oh, poo. I'm missing a layer, I think. Hmm. All right, well, we're gonna put this aside for a second. Okay, so. Once again, I have die cut the second largest stitched rectangle die and made a mat for it out of the Poppy Parade. And then from for the scallop, stitched scalloped rectangle, because I thought the, the white was just gonna be too stark against all this that's going on in the designer series paper, I actually cut it from the designer series paper itself because on the opposite side is this watercolor type wash with the poppy parade and I can actually put it right back inside and stamp my greeting right on there and then you don't have that stark whisper white. So for this card we're going to adhere our designer series paper layer onto the poppy parade and I have a goop. I got a goopy in my glue. All right. So we're gonna take this and then we're going to put it onto our mat. So there's only about an eighth of an inch larger. Get that on all square. But this time, I'm going to pop this up on the front of my card. Okay. All 
All right, so this is now gonna pop up on the front. Okay, now I need to stamp my greeting. I'm gonna move all this stuff out of my way because I need my stamparatus. Which brings me to the point that I thought I was missing a layer, and I'm not because I forgot. I left it with the Stamparatus. Okay, so I have my Stamparatus. And I don't know if you've noticed, but you can order these paper packs that are pre-cut for the Stamparatus. And I usually, use, I actually use those just about every time I use my Stamparatus. Which way am I going? I wanna go this way. All right, so I'm gonna stamp my greeting using the Stamparatus. I just didn't leave myself enough room to do this. And I'm going to use the Just For You, if I can find it. What the heck did I do with it? Which is from the Meant To Be stamp set. We use this on every single one of our cards on Sunday. And of course, like a dummy, I had it all on my stamp stamparatus with a template. And what did I do? I cleaned the stamp, I took it off the stamparatus, and now I have to start over. So I put this down and hopefully it's pretty straight. And then I take, this is what I do if I'm gonna mass produce. I take my ink and I ink up my stamp. Then I stamp it on the paper. So this is just one of those sheets from the um, pack. Then I can take my die cut piece that I wanna stamp my greeting on and I can lay it down and that's not really straight. So this is gonna throw me off a little. So we're gonna have to hope. I can lay it down onto the grid paper. Now, if it was whisper white, I could hold it up to the window and look through. Actually, I might be able to look through on this. Nope, I can't see it. I needed to stamp it darker. But if it was whisper white, I could look right through it. So I'm just gonna have to hope this stamps relatively straight because if it's all a skewed it'll drive me crazy all right well here's hoping right except I think I want it a little further up maybe I should use the whisper white then I could look through and make sure it was gonna be straight all right here we go moment of truth if it's crooked, it's crooked. Oh, it's not too crooked. But because I'm stamping Poppy Parade on Poppy Parade, I want it a little bit darker. So I'm going to stamp it twice, which the beautiful thing about the Stamparatus is that you can do that and you will know that you're gonna be in the exact same spot. So see how now it's much darker? so you can see it better. All right, and it's really not crooked at all. Wow, I'm impressed. I really had to wing that. All right, so let's bring all this back in. Don't need that right now. Okay, so now we have our insert. So this is going to get popped up and reinserted back into the middle. And the reason that I put the Poppy Parade layer behind the designer series paper would be to camouflage a little bit that I cut that out of the middle and cheated. If it had the, if it was the green and it wasn't exactly reinserted or someone was actually to tip and look under there, you'd, it would be blatantly obvious. So I'm just gonna pop this up. and put it in the middle. Oh, 
let's see. Okay. So this is gonna go back in the middle. Ugh. I need bionic glasses so that I can actually see what I'm doing. You can't, can't put your face directly up to the card when you have a camera in the way. Okay, so see how that covers the fact that I cut this out of that? Pretty tricky, huh? Okay, so now we're gonna assemble some flowers. So I have die cut a whole bunch of different elements here from the dies. And where did I put them? Okay, so again, that's the Poppy Moments dies, which comes with all the different flower elements and leaf elements. So I'm using the Granny Apple Green and the Garden Green for my leaves. Then I have Flirty Flamingo and Poppy Parade for my flowers. And then I have the Basic Black for, what are they, stamens? And these are all going to get adhered together. So what I did is these little... Um, detailed pieces. I first did it with liquid glue and that was kind of a nightmare. And I know they say you can use the silicone mat and a sponge and dab the glue and everything, but I still make a mess. So I actually used the adhesive sheets. I still have some left from when Stampin' Up! used to carry them. And they're kind of my go-to for these, for these, um, detailed dies and I know you can buy them other places so because I'm not good with the glue that's what I decided to do all right so there's one flower peel off my backing because I am a messy Mary when it comes to glue then this guy is gonna go on here. And then these little guys, I did not use the adhesive sheets on. So I'm gonna use a little bit of liquid glue. And these little guys, there's actually a little notch that lines up with the layer below it. So it actually makes it really easy to line. Whoa, I just threw the glue. It actually makes it really easy to line up where it needs to go. Okay, so there's that one. Oops. And then on these leaf pieces, I also use the adhesive sheets. Because if you guys had to watch me fiddle with the glue and get these on here, you'd be here for you'd be here a long time. As it is, we still may be here for a while lining these up. But these line up really well. Just kind of start at one end and work your way to the other. All right, so there's that. And then I used my Wink of Stella and I colored, or I'm going to color all the leaves just to give them a little bit of something something. Give them a little sparkle, dress them up a little bit. So I'm just kind of painting that over the whole entire thing. And the way that this started came about was because on my first cards, I had used the liquid glue and I had all these stickies and I couldn't get them unsticky. No matter what I did from the glue oozing. 
So I thought, oh, well, if I paint on some Winkostella, maybe it'll make the glue less sticky. <laughs> so that's how covering these with Winkostella came about. But I actually like it, so I'm going to do it on this one. So I'm just really painting the whole entire thing. And then, I'm not sure if this is gonna work the way that I want it to, because it did the other day, but that doesn't mean it's going to today. Squeeze a little bit more down into the, into the pen and flick it. Ooh, that was a big one. Now it's going everywhere. Flick it onto the front of the card. That's a little too much. When you see my first sample, you'll know that that was not intentional to have that much, but it's too late now. Okay, keeping it real. That's what we're doing, keeping it real. I must have had less in the barrel when I did my sample because that stuff flew. I've got big goobies. That's all right, we're gonna cover some of them anyway. We'll just cover them up. That's all. Stick a flower on it. No one will know. Okay. Then that one can go there. Let's see. I actually think I want to move this one. I want to overlap a little bit more. Let's see. I think maybe that way okay and then I got to do my leaves so he can tuck under the flower look at the big goobies or don't look at the big goobies <laughs> oops oh well but too late now all right, and then that one, let's see. How do I want that one? I think I'll put that one there. He just has to scotch a little. Actually, he has to come out. He doesn't want to come out because he's going off the card. All right, you know what? This stem is bugging me. So I'm just gonna pick it off. Now it's not there anymore, it can't bug me. Because he needs to be on the card, but I don't want his stem sticking out. All right, that's better. That's better. Put a dimensional under there. All right, so that's the front. Oh, I really don't like those goobies, but maybe they'll dry. Maybe they'll dry lighter. Okay, so now we need to do the inside. So what I did is I took the another stitched rectangle and I cut the whisper white with the stitched rectangle. Because I really like the effect that has on the inside of a card. It dresses it up. And then... Hopefully this is the right layer. Then I cut another piece of the Poppy Parade layer behind it. And I'm just gonna have to hope it's the right size. It always looks smaller than, than I think it needs to be until I get it on the inside of the card and then it's fine. So I'm gonna take the Memento Black. And this is the, I guess what you'd call the Field of Poppies from the stamp set which of course I tossed aside. So that's this one right here from the Painted Poppy stamp set. And I'm gonna stamp that and I covered the stitching just along the edge of the stitching with some post-it note so that I could do some overlapping flowers but I didn't necessarily want them on the stitching. So there's one, that's way too high. Oh well, that's what happens when you
when you can't see that good. Really don't want it that high. You know what? I'm gonna have to cut it. That's gonna bug me. What else can I do? Hmm. Well, I guess it doesn't look that bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. I'm just gonna leave it because if I mess with it, you know I'm gonna make a real disaster. What I wanted to do is have it closer to the stitching, but I wasn't paying attention. I was trying to hustle. And then I'm going to use my Puppy Parade marker. And I'm just gonna color in the flowers, but I'm just gonna kind of scribble. I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna make it perfect because I want it to kind of look watercolored. So I do want some white areas. If it goes outside the lines, it's okay. But I don't wanna actually do watercolor in case I accidentally oversaturate my Whisper White. Because this is for the inside of the card. So you wanna have a smooth surface to write on. I just may have to do something about that bottom where it didn't exactly hit the stitching like I wanted it to. Maybe sponge some green down there, some of the granny apple green, so it looks like the poppies are coming up out of the grass, that might be a good idea. Okay. Make sure I got all my flowers. There's one there, one there, one there. There's another one over there. Yeah, so I think I might take some granny apple green and either sponge some grass down here or find a stamp that has grass. Because that white is going to bug me. I get hung up on little things like that. Okay, so I'm going to take some adhesive. Put my whisper white stitched rectangle down. And then... I'm not going to use that. I'll just use this. And then this is going to go on the inside. Oops. But I'd like it to be somewhat straight. Not bad. Okay, so that's our three cards. Not too bad for a day's work. So this is my original. As you can tell, it didn't have that big explosion of, of um, the Wink Estella. And then this is what I intended to do on the inside is have it come really close to the stitching. So this I'll just have to fill in with some green, sponge it on or something. So we had that one. And then we had this one. And then we had the puppy dog card. And the other day, we made this one, and this one, and that one. So we now have six car different cards all following the same sketch. So I hope you've enjoyed today's class, today's mini class, and that you will download the sketch that I have posted here on my Facebook page and give it a try. And if you do try it, I would love to see what you come up with. I'd love it if you'd come back and share it with me. And that's all I have for you today. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed the cards. I hope you'll give them a try and I hope you'll try the sketch. So happy Tuesday, everyone. And I will stamp with you again soon. Bye now.